Okay, uh, welcome to Ice Coffee with Joe. It's an absolute roaster of a day, 30 degrees. And uh, we're going to talk about the weather. We always talk about the weather. I used to smile the newspaper, the Stornoway Gazette. They used to say that people always look for the obituaries and for the weather. People talk about death and people talk about the weather. Well, do you know this? I'm not sure our ancestors were too wrong in that. Um, the weather has a great deal to tell us about God. We are into chapter 37. This is the last chapter of Eli Hughes' speech. And he says this. At this, my heart pounds and leaps from its place. Listen, listen to the roar of his voice, to the rumbling that comes from his mouth. He unleashes his lightning beneath the whole earth and sends it to the ends of the earth. After that comes the sound of his roar. He thunders with his majestic voice. When his voice resounds, he holds nothing back. God's voice thunders in marvelous ways. He does great things beyond our understanding. He says to the snow, fall on the earth, and to the rain shower, be a mighty downpour, so that everyone he has made may know his work. He stops all people from their labor. The animals take cover, they remain in their dens. The tempest comes out from its chamber, the cold from the driving winds. The breath of God produces, <coughs> produces ice, and the broad waters become frozen. He loads the clouds with moisture. He scatters his lightning through them. At his direction, they swirl around over the face of the whole earth to do whatever he commands them. He brings the clouds to punish people or to water his earth and show his love. Now, when I listen to this, I do think a little bit that some people will be thinking, yeah, right, this is going to be a... You know, nobody thinks like that anymore. We can do the science and we can say how the clouds work and so on. But because you can say how something works doesn't mean to say that God's not doing it. Um, you know, I, I find the idea that God cannot use his own laws, physics, biology, chemistry, just a somewhat bizarre one. And I think this poetic expression is just great. So you've got three storms that are mentioned in this whole section of Job. Uh, in the earlier part as well. The rainstorm, the winter storm, and the summer storms. And this verses 6 to 13 describe the winter storms. It's a, a picture of a harsh, cold world in which harsh things happen. And the rain and lightning are symbols and pictures of God judging the nations. It can be both beneficial and destructive. So notice verse 13, the clouds punish people or water his earth and show his love. Now, I want to add a side thought here. Is that solely for the benefit of humanity? Why is everything so man-centered? Um, God does it for the rest of creation as well. Someone said this, God is free to do what he pleases without having to explain everything as part of his purpose for mankind. So I think, we'll maybe come on to the, su the summer weather uh, tomorrow, but that's the, the, the winter weather. And you know, our response in all of this, verse 14, and well, this is a kind of link verse, so we'll do this tomorrow as well. <clears throat> Listen to this, Job. Stop and consider God's wonders. Our response to all of this is surely to stand and be still, to stop and to listen, to consider and look, to be still and know that I am God. Behind me here, you'll see there's bush, and I often go walking in that. And you know, Sometimes I walk and I have my headphones on and I'm listening to a podcast. I need to stop sometimes and just listen. Just listen to the birds, listen to the trees, listen to the wind. Listening to God speaking through his nature and God speaking through the weather. This may be one other thing as well as be still and know that I am God. One other thing I'd want to add. These natural phenomena also mirror, they're a picture of God's dealings with us. Sometimes it's like we're frozen by the icy blast of providence and then in comes the sunlight. It begins to shine and God comes in awesome majesty. You know, I, I do feel it in that way. I mean, some of you, you'll be watching this and you're in Scotland and it's been snowing and I know my daughter EJ just loves the snow and the cold, but I don't know, I, I love the warmth. And when the warmth comes and the snow begins to melt, 
And I think sometimes like th that's like us in our lives, isn't it? And I just pray that you would know the warmth of the Lord and you would know his kind providence upon you and that God would melt the coldness in your own heart, the coldness in your life, the hard things that are there. And you begin to know, as, as Cream put it, the sunshine of your love. God bless you and see you tomorrow. Bye.